this is um, a patient who had meningitis and then he was cured. He developed a palsy during meningococcal meningitis And then after he fully recovered from the palsy. So the question is, uh, which of the following signs and symptoms is most likely present when the patient drinks coffee during his illness? So of course, we, we need to, to, first of all, to identify which nerve was affected in this condition. Did you notice how uh, the tongue deviates when he protrudes his tongue? It deviates to the right. So injury of which nerve is responsible for this deviation? It would be the hypoglossal nerve. So if the hypoglossal nerve is affected, why should the tongue deviate? Which muscle is mainly affected in this case when you protrude the tongue? that the genioglossus muscle will be affected. And you should keep in mind that we have two genioglossus muscle, one on this side and one on, the, on this side. So when the nerve is affected on this side, on the right side, then the other genioglossus will protrude the tongue, but on the affected side, it will not be able to protrude the tongue. That's why the tongue deviates toward the affected side. So now we concluded that the nerve is the hypoglossal nerve. Now, if the hypoglossal nerve was affected, which one of these signs and symptoms you would expect to find? Which nerve is responsible for the taste? Okay, and posteriorly, posterior thirds of the tongue will be the glossopharyngeal and vagus. So will this patient here in this, in this video, will he be unable to taste during his illness? Okay. He will still have taste. So A is incorrect. A is incorrect. Now let's go with B. Inability to feel temperature of his drink. Which nerve is responsible for that? Nerve or nerves? Lingual nerve anteriorly anterior two thirds and posteriorly, it will be again the glossopharyngeal and the vagus. These are general, not special sensations. So to feel um, to feel the temperature, feel the, if you touch his tongue, they will continue to feel that because those nerves were not affected, okay? So again, he will still be able to feel the temperature of his drink. How about drooling from the corner of the mouth? Will he drool? Why? Which in nerve injury results in drooling from the corner of the mouth? Well, inferior alveolar means that this is sensory for the lower teeth. Mental nerve means that it is sensory to the lip and the muco mucosa of the mouth. But this is a motor action. Drooling from the corner of the mouth is because of weakness of a muscle which is the orbicularis oris muscle. And this will be the function of which nerve, which nerve supplies orbicularis oris muscle. Mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve supplies muscles of mastication, anterior belly of digastric, mylohyoid, tensor palati and tensor tympani. Orbicularis oris is a muscle of facial expression. So it's the facial. So it is not affected. So none of the above will be affected in this patient because the patient has a problem with his hypoglossal nerve. Okay, so now look at this patient here and the continuation of the video. How come that it looks like he was moving his tongue from side to side?
well, good try, but actually, if you look closely here, he is actually not moving his tongue. Look what he is moving, see? He is moving his mandible, side-to-side -side movement of the mandible. So which muscles are responsible for side-to-side -side movement of the mandible? Or which nerve is responsible for that movement? Yes, so it's the, the, the medial pterygoid muscle, the lateral pterygoid muscle, and these are supply. So he is moving his mandible and give us the, giving us the false impression. Look what happens when, uh, when he recovers. See, now he is actually moving the tongue side to side without moving his mandible. Look at him now. See, there's no movement of the mandible at all. Okay, thank you very much.